Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 8. In the last video we were reading about walking in love. Now we're going to read about walking in light. Verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Notice it says that it doesn't say that you once were in darkness. You were once darkness is what it's saying. In John 8 verse 12. It says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Matthew 5, uh, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is on a hill cannot be hidden. Notice that in the John 8 one I just read, it said, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. In Matthew 5, he says, you are the light of the world. How can we both be the lights? Well, I like this illustration. Jesus shines like the sun. The, the sun shines like the sun. The S-O-N shines like the S-U-N. And we shine like the moon. You know, the moon doesn't have light of itself. It just reflects the light that's of the sun. And what affects the amount of... What, what affects here on earth our view of the moon or how much of the moon is shining, a full moon, a new moon, a half moon, whatever it is, it's uh it depends upon how much of the earth is blocking the moon from the sun and we are not going to shine bright in this world if the if this world is blocking us from the sun from the son and i want to shine bright so the the more you want to shine the more that you're going to shine, that means the more of the world is going to be out of your way. And it says, so you were once darkness, but you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children in the light. Jesus told Paul in Acts 26, verse 17 and 18, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and, and, and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Colossians 1.13 He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of, the Son of His love. So walk in children of light. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that the day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. And in that context, Paul was talking about the coming of the Lord, that we're going to be ready because we're sons of the light, and He's the light of the world, we're the light of the world, because His light is shining through us. We're going to be ready for when He's coming. So you're either being ruled by the powers of darkness or by Jesus Christ. You're either in the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. You cannot have both. You can't be in both. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? These two things can't mix. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 and through seven, this is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So we're to get out of the darkness and come into the light. You can't be in both. You can't be ruled by both. You, you're either in one or the other. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect if you're in the light. It just means you're continuing in the light. Even when you sin, it's exposed to the light. And you, the Lord, you're bringing it to the Lord. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. I remember uh, when I first became a Christian, I used to ask the question, is this a sin or is that a sin? But then as I grew, I started asking myself, does this glorify God? 
Verse 10, it says, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. It isn't really an issue of right or wrong. And so many Christians are concerned with, is it right for a Christian to do this or not to do that? Then they, they try to define the line between what is right and what is wrong for a Christian to do. But Paul tells us to seek to prove if it is acceptable to the Lord. You may be able to convince yourself that as a Christian, you are free to do a certain thing. But is it acceptable to the Lord? Does it glorify God? That's the real question. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Uh, in verse 9, Paul spoke of the fruit of the Spirit. Now he speaks of the unfruitful works of darkness. And he says, have no fellowship with them. And again, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14, what we read, don't be unequally yoked. What communion has light with darkness? 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. If Again, that's the, the verses. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Can't be in both. Again, going on. Verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. For it's shameful, again, so verse 12, it's shameful for the things that they're doing in the darkness, and uh, all things that are exposed are exposed by the light. John chapter 3, verse 17 through 20. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds might be clearly seen, that they might be that they have been done in God. Those are the words of Jesus. Those that are evil, they won't come to the light. They hate the light. That's why when you witness to certain people, they just can't stand it. They they don't want to hear it. They want nothing of it. Because they don't want their deeds to be exposed. And that's something that to pray for for them. It's for them to see the emptiness of it. So they will not come to Christ because their deeds are evil. Christ is the light. And they don't want to come to that light because it will reveal the truth about them. They love to stay in the darkness. They stay away from the light. Um, and it's interesting the things that people will do in the dark. It's interesting how behavior changes radically when the light's turned on. Paul tells them, whosoever makes, whatsoever makes manifest is light. And uh, light not only dispels the darkness, it, it shows what's going on in the darkness also. So you are the light of the world, but don't be surprised when the world tries to put you out. But you stay in Christ and let His light shine through you. And it, it will... It would dispel the darkness.